Good morning, hello and welcome. My name is Bhuvan Apurvajha. This is the Indian Express Explained. Let's get started. I have three topics for you today. The first one is to do with a critically endangered amphibian that is uh, of immense importance, uh, uh, lead article on the front page of Indian Express. So we'll seek to understand that particular amphibian. Okay. And also say understand another associated concept of neoteny. Okay. Very critical, very important, but very simple to understand. So don't you worry. Then after that, number two, we'll look at an article from the explain page and say the differences between the factors of production as we know it in agriculture. And then what are factors of technology? And so how are these two linked in so far as agricultural output is concerned? Okay. A very simple article, but important nonetheless from the examination perspective, especially because again it draws linkages between technology and agriculture and productivity. Okay. And then the last one is to do with the Booker Prize. Uh, the book, uh, the prize being announced, but more importantly, we'll go a step further and understand, say, what is the criteria for an author to be awarded Booker Prize? And obviously, I have PYQs and MCQs that I always do for you, right? Bull, bull, your neighbor. Good morning, guys. Let's get started. So, this is my Telegram channel. Go ahead and access the PDF of this entire lecture. I will upload it uh, sometime this afternoon. You also have questions that you can expect, resource materials, original materials, by the way. All of that that is shared on this particular channel that goes by the name of Bhuvan Study IQ. Right. So, the first topic that I have for you look at this uh, creature uh, with a smile on its face. So, this is known as an exotol. Eldo, good morning, how are you? Okay. This is an ex uh, exotol. And please understand now say, how do we criteria, what's, how do we define this particular uh, species? How do we define this particular amphibian? Okay. So, it's a native endangered, in fact, critically endangered fish-like type of salamander in Mexico, okay. It's an amphibian, right. It's carnivorous and more importantly, you realize that it has the ability to st stay young throughout its life. It does not get old, right. And one more important uh, factor that you must realize is that this uh, particular amphibian, exotol, it is able to go ahead and regenerate parts of its own body. So, you find that it is of immense importance to the scientists in so far as say treatment for cancer or limb regeneration uh, applications for humans is concerned. Okay. Now, they want, obviously, this, this particular species becomes important in that case. But what you realize is that, uh, well, it's critically endangered. Okay. And what is, why is it critically endangered? Because of pollution. Okay, so let's go ahead and understand this one by one. Saket, all the best. Charu, good morning, namaskar. Dr. Sriram, good morning. Okay, so let's look at it. Exotol, a native endangered fish type of salamander in Mexico. Now, there is a campaign, adopt an exotol. Basically, you can go ahead and adopt, pay some money. Okay, you buy the particular species in conservation of food. These are to, to get the community involved. But from the examination perspective, you need to realize that in Mexican exotol, the population density has plummeted 99.5%. Yes, it's on the brink of extinction if you can understand it that way. Okay. So, all 18 species of this exotol remains critically endangered. Okay. And well, why is it important for us? Because you're looking at treatment for cancer. You're looking at treatment for say limb regeneration. Why again? Because exotol has the ability to go ahead and do exactly this. Right. So, this is the entire focus here. Now, why is it under threat? Because of water pollution. So, in Mexico, in the valley of Mexico, just outside Mexico City, yes, you had many water bodies that were present. If you have ever looked at the atlas of Mexico, you will realize that they were very important lakes. Right. But because of the stress being caused by the overpopulation, the population density increasing in Mexico City, these particular water bodies have been encroached upon and slowly but steadily, because of the pollution of effluence that comes out from the city, right, the uh, population of exotol has gone down to critical levels. Threshold has been crossed, okay, which is why you find that IUCN lists it as critically endangered, right. So, let's look at it. Now, which two lakes that I am talking about, okay, you are looking at Lake Tomilico and Lake Chalco, okay. These are the two lakes that I'm talking about. Now, look at this. This is a map that I've got, which is from the year 1971. 
Okay, it's an old map which tells you that yes, these water bodies existed that time in the basin of Mexico or the Valley of Mexico as we know it, right? But then because of the population proliferation in Mexico City, you have had stress being created in all of these water bodies, right? To the extent today that you find that where well, Lake Chalco no longer exists. In fact, it exists as a, almost a minor water body, okay? It's almost like a stream, not even a stream, it's like a pond anymore, right? It's no, it does not meet the criteria of a lake. And the other one is also having a lot of stress on it. So you see the habitat of the exotol is straight away destroyed. Whatever habitat remains, you find that pollution is being uh, introduced there. So this sensitive salamander, this amphibian, is now looking at the brink of extinction, okay? And why is it getting extinct is because of the reasons I told you. But from the uh, scientific research point of view, that the axotol can go ahead and regenerate parts of its own brain, its own limb, yes, gives us hope that, well, there could be a particular uh, genetic composition within it that allows it to do so. And can we harness it for use for humankind, right? So now let's understand neoteny. I told you, axotol has the ability to stay young forever. Okay? To stay young forever. So how does it do this? What is neoteny essentially? Right? So what you find is for amphibians, because again, you know amphibians live on both land and water. Most amphibians start their, uh, say, amphibian journey on water, through water first. Okay? So you have, you are on water first. Now eventually, as the amphibian develops the ability to go on to land, it undergoes certain modifications, right? So your gill becomes much more depressed, you develop upper body, body strength, all of that is introduced. Now what happens in neoteny exactly? Okay, let's understand it in a simple manner, right? So during this metamorphosis that I'm talking about, okay, this metamorphosis from water-based animal to a land-based animal or land-based entity, right? The axotol never essentially outgrows their juvenile stage, okay? During this metamorphosis, this change, the axotol has the ability to stay in its juvenile stage forever, okay? It does not attain maturity as such. And this phenomenon is known as Neoteny. So you might ask me, so how do you go ahead and categorize that it stays young? So what are the say youthful traits that you are looking at? Okay. What are the youthful traits of an axotol? So number one, you will look at it say feathery wings. Okay. It will have feathery will, wings, feathery gills, sorry. Right. It will have webbed feet. All of this will stay with it. Okay. Webbed feet, feathery gills. All this allows it to retain some of the characteristics of the uh, water body world while also being uh, the able to go ahead and live on land, okay? So web feed, feathery gills, okay? Good morning, good morning, Kaushik, how are you? Welcome, thanks for joining, okay? And then it also has, it develops lungs, right? You see? So this allows it these are the say youthful traits that allow it to remain young forever. Very, very important. Again, a critically endangered species that is in the news. So the axotol, I would suggest you go ahead first, look at the say uh, IUCN red list, obviously, and then look at the habitat. The two lakes that I told you about, to told you about Lake Chalco and the other lake that Lake Chimilico, okay, in the Valley of Mexico, trace them and have a basic idea of say uh, why this area is important. Now, when you consider Mexico, from the current affairs perspective, obviously this is in the news, but more importantly, one more idea and one more from the geography perspective that you should consider, okay, is how Mexico is now emerging as an alternative route post the stress on the Panama Canal, okay. You know Panama Canal is the one that uh, say joins my Pacific and my Atlantic, it separates my North America and my South America, right, that's basic NCRT knowledge, but you will also realize that my Mexico is now emerging as an alternative through its project, which is called as the Isthmus of the Tehuantepec project. Right? 
So we have done this uh, in detail in the past, where you will find that Mexico is now providing a railway system, right, to negate the stress or the losses that are being caused due to the stress on Panama Canal due to El Nino, right. So Mexico is emerging as a very alternative hot destination in fact, okay. This particular project goes by the name of CIIT. This is supposed to become operational very soon and thus you will find that, uh, well, it will provide a conduit for trade and commerce, not just between, say, Europe and South America, but also Europe and North America, okay. So once again, Mexico's Tehuan Tepec project and Axotol, two things that you should absolutely be aware of for next year, right. Let's go ahead and look at this uh, question that I have for you. Which of the above are true for the inter-oceanic corridor of the isthmus of Tehuan Tepec project being developed by Mexico? It connects the Pacific and Atlantic, linked through the railway system, and it is being developed as an alternative to Panama Canal, right? May I also suggest go ahead and conduct your own two minutes of research on this. Obviously, I will uh, make sure that you have all the requisite knowledge regarding this, but it is important to develop interest in the subject, okay? Think from the, say, geographical uh, perspective and say, what are the other alternatives? So, you have a project that is being run in Nicaragua, okay, that is happening through Chinese support in the very area, which is under, well, it has been stalled correctly, okay, it hasn't worked out so far for them, okay. You obviously have the Panama Canal that is under stress, yes. You are also looking at the, say, uh, Magellan Strait or the Drake Passage. Right, that's the longer way that you go south of South America, right. Then you're also looking at the, say, Northern Passage, Northern, Northwest Passage, where you go above Alaska and then enter through, say, the uh, area through just near uh, uh, your, just west of Norway, okay. So all of those particular areas are the, say, essentially the choke points or the alternatives that are being developed in relation to Panama Canal. And for you, it is very important to know, given that it is a mix of two topics. It's trade and commerce, it's geography, it's navigational channels, all of which you are supposed to have a fair idea about. Okay, so answer this question for me. Meanwhile, in 60 seconds or less, very quickly, the GS Foundation P2I course, yes, the admissions are closing fast. In fact, the Hindi batch is beginning on the 14th of December and the English and the English batch begin in just, what, two days from now, right? Uh, early morning batch, one of the last batches that you will have before eventually we dive into the entire UPSC prelims uh, discussion. And for those of you who are seeking guidance just for prelims, well, hang on, hang on and stand by. I have another uh, particular project being offered by Study IQ, which will help you tackle prelims to no end. Okay, so go ahead quickly, look at the course deliverables, the language of your preference, and sign up. Right, get the requisite hand holding that is required, and well take a serious attempt, give yourself the best options, the best skills to go ahead and give yourself a chance to uh, clear the examination, right? Use the code BA Life. you will uh, get allotted to my batch, plus obviously you have a substantial discount that is offered to you, okay? Right, so the second topic from the Indian Express explain page, growing more from less. Doesn't this ring a bell though? Before we go ahead into the discussion, huh? doesn't this ring a bell? For example, we have projects like what? The Pearl Drop More Crop, right? You must have all heard of it, the Prime Minister's Krishi uh, Sichai Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana, right? So what is the focus? The focus is on efficiency, okay? Efficiency of what? Of agricultural productivity. So how do you go ahead and determine your efficiency? Yes, how do you make your agricultural productivity more efficient, more productive? So you look at the various factors, the factors that are involved in so far as giving you the final agricultural produce is concerned. So these factors are known as the factors of production, okay. And so initially, you're supposed to know about the four factors of production, the basics. You have land, you have water, you have people, labor, and obviously energy. Now, here is what you need to know. For a given level of technology, for example, let technology component be constant. Yes, we right now we are living in the say prehistoric times, no technology whatsoever. You have to go ahead and uh, uh, well grow a crop using these four components only. So you will realize that well, each of them is a good enough factor to go ahead and determine the eventual output that you have, yeah, right? So these are the factors of production. And what you will realize is that today, 
the factors of production, the four that I told you about, plus factors of technology, because again, technology is an enabler for our agriculturists, for our farmers. It makes life easy for them. Okay? It gives them options. It gives them security. And these two put together, eventually go ahead and determine my agricultural growth. Right? Once we have established this connection, then let's go ahead and understand in detail, one by one, my factors of production for land. So what you'll realize, let's start from the beginning, shuruat se shuruat. Okay? In the pre-green uh, green revolution era, the primary focus of government of India was just one thing. Can we have more land for cultivation? Can we have more land for agriculture? Right? And thus that thrust was also seen. You had a, a report that was done by uh, Niti Ayok that went ahead and said that well, India's farm sector grew by an average of 3% per year right? from this period. In, a, in 10 years, it grew by almost 2.8% per year. Now, what does that happen? This goes and increases the country's net sown area. So how much of it you are going ahead and doing your agriculture on? That number goes up. right? With Green Revolution, you obviously had say a lot of uh, change that came in. But this was the fundamental basis. You also find that in terms of agricultural productivity, you are aware of say alluvial soils, black soils, laterite soils, red soils. Okay? And so which of it is the most productive, which is most fertile? Straight away you will realize that alluvial soil are the most fertile. Okay? You have continuous deposition that happens year after year, gives you an irregular soil profile. Yes, you have mixing of nutrients that goes on, replenish, repl uh, replenishment of uh, nutrients that happens on a continuous basis. And thus alluvial soil is my most say, fertile. Okay? You also find that well, the distribution of alluvial soil is quite huge. So in terms of having our land, we are rightly placed. We do have continuously fertile soil available in a large area. Got it? Then you are looking at black soil, red soil, brown, laterite, mountain and obviously desert soil being my last, my least fertile. Right? So this is from the, well, I've, this is straight from the NCRT that I have picked up. But the interpretation of this guys, okay? It's a simple uh, descending order uh, uh, that we have mentioned here. But how are you supposed to interpret this? Your interpretation is going to be that because we have say more of these soils that are conducive under the right conditions, right? So India has that say fundamental base for good agricultural productivity. So if our land is taken care of, then let's go ahead and look at the other factors of production, which is water. Okay. Now, in terms of water, we are primarily dependent on what? Our monsoons. Right? So, you are looking at your southwest monsoon and your northeast monsoon. Right? The two parts of my Indian monsoon. You are also looking at, say, irrigation that happens through, say, canals, water channels, and you are looking at groundwater through bore wells. Okay? And so, what you find is that in water, while we are looking at multiple options that a farmer has, even then, 54 plus percentage of the country is under water stress. So, a water is one area where we need to do better. Okay? So, water availability dependent on both rainfall, access to irrigation and groundwater. And thus you find that, well, this is another factor of production. Similarly, labor and energy, you will find, well, if you had, again, if technology being zero, let's assume that. If technology was completely zero, right? So, the basic technology that is provided to a farmer, you are expected to have, say, a bullock. Someone, a beast of burden who will go ahead and do the hard work for you or help you. Right? So, if you had access to bullocks, obviously you are looking at better crop productivity. If you didn't have bullocks at all, well, no crop productivity or lesser crop productivity. Now, let's go ahead and introduce, because we have established, right? Because we have established that my agricultural growth is dependent on both production and tech, let's look at the tech bit now. Okay? So, what are my technology? factors, just four of them. But more importantly, realize this. The factors of technology enable more efficient use of the factors of production. It's a complementary role. Right? It's a complementary role that the technology does to my factors of production. Very so common sense. Think from the farmer's perspective. Right? So, if you have access to better high yield variety seeds, say what Norman Borlaug had done. Can you expect higher productivity? Absolutely. Yes. If you have access to say pest resistant or disease resistant seeds, right? Will you be better placed 
in terms of security of your farm uh, or your particular land, uh, tract of land absolutely right so genetics is my first factor of technology you are looking at high yield varieties pest resistant varieties drought resistant varieties yes as far as possible having resilient agriculture this is the entire focus here that resilience should be introduced into the system right now crop nutrition so you know that in terms of our npk fertilizer most indian soils will lack in say nitrogen okay it's an established fact organic matter also varies from soil to soil so which means what that even though you have soils that are considered fertile you need to go ahead and give them supplements supplements are required in the absence of which your agricultural productivity will reduce correct so how do you go ahead how do you go ahead and do that so synthetic fertilizers combination with the breeding varieties respond to high nutrient doses so you're looking at synthetic organic plus inorganic both mixed together in the right manner in the right components so as to give you the right type of fertilizer for your soil again because my soils are different my concentration of distribution is different so i can't have a single use fertilizer for each type of soil right you need tailor made fertilizers for different types of soil similarly num num number 3 crop protection right the chemicals aimed at ensuring that yield gains from genetics breeding right look at this nutrition fertilizers are realized what is my crop protection essentially huh? so you are looking at herbicides right you know that say wild weeds can go ahead and adversely negatively affect my agricultural field so you need herbicides that are designed to go ahead and protect the crop you will have certain varieties that will protect the crop against locust attacks now right genetically modified varieties that will be resistant to locust attacks what are you doing you are giving resilience in the system you are enabling better productivity giving the farmer more security similarly number 4 agronomic interventions right so all the technology per se huh? our definition of technology is just limited at times to say what we use huh? that comes from a privileged view point but when you go on the ground you'll realize that as simple as say threshers harvesters these exponentially increase the productivity of the farmer right they go ahead and reduce effort right the effort is reduced the productivity is increasing it's a big advantage for any farmer so these are the factors of technology that complement my factors of production right now when you understand this let's look at one particular policy of the bharat sarkar the per drop more crop we have all heard of this pradhan mantri krishi sichai yojana right so let's look at it now how does this go ahead and use those particular elements to go ahead and help our farmers okay as a case study so first understand centrally sponsored scheme okay center state uh, will be giving in 75 25% in case of northeastern and hilly region 90 10 this is the uh, finance distribution here now let's look at it convergence of investment in irrigation at the field level you see you are looking at not just dependency on rainfall you are also looking at dependency on groundwater you are looking at dependency on irrigation and thus there needs to be an integrated approach to give the farmer the best hope to get their water secured why you realize that 54% of the country is under water stress you see why my pradhan mantri krishi sichai yojana is very very important look at this improving on farmer water use efficiency so we are looking at say precision irrigation ha huh? what is this done so as to reduce the wastage of water expanding the cultivable area under assured irrigation the key term here being assured irrigation har khet mein pani that was the tag line right so much the focus is on inclusivity more and more individuals should be under this scheme Yes, get assured rainfall, uh, assured pani, so as to reduce dependency on this. Okay, and the adoption of precision irrigation and other water saving technologies. See, so what is happening here? You are going ahead and introducing technology to supplement and complement the job being done by the other factors of production, the four that we identified, in a manner so as to improve my farm use efficiency, my agricultural productivity. Okay, a very simple article. and a very good mains questions can be formed out of this so as to say ask you to critically analyze 
uh, the government of india's policy in so far as say empowering the agricultural community is concerned okay how does government of india scientifically go about empowering the agricultural community in terms of improving farm use efficiency and agricultural productivity right very very simple topic go ahead and have a look at this entire slide meanwhile answer these questions for me accelerated irrigation benefit program ministry of water resources integrated watershed management program ministry of rural development and on farm water management department of agriculture and cooperation identify the correctly matched for me please leave your answers for me in the comment box like you always do eldo deep maji yes i think you are most likely correct good answers we'll check the answer okay like i had uh, promised you if you are appearing for prelims for the year 2024 and if you are well studying on your own you have my best wishes however if you feel the need that you require some element of help okay probably this is the best course that you can sign up for yes this goes ahead and gives you an intensive thrust not just on concept building but also on question solving with multiple mcqs being presented to you on a daily basis right so as to give you that extra edge that is required eventually the mantra for clearing prelims uh, requires two essential components number one that you need to have a wide range of study okay and number two you need to have the exam temperament that probably most of the candidates never work on right so this is what i would suggest for any serious candidate who is looking for uh, success just for prelims examination the sip plus 2024 use the code ba live the class is beginning soon and it's an evening batch the classes will be recorded and live you can find them all online and uh, well, look at the course deliverables as i say you will find the sign up link in the description box below okay book a prize awarded to irish writer paul lynch right for his, for the novel prophet song now here is one question that i have for you that book a prize is it awarded just to fictional books or non fiction books also okay can you have a biography that can be awarded a book a prize no okay what you realize is that book a prize is exclusively for fictional books okay and there is another criteria that has to be met for you to go ahead and at least apply to be considered for a book a prize which is number 1 that your particular book your publishing should be done in uk or uh, ireland okay self published books book published in india or bangladesh or bhutan or nepal or any other country not allowed not up for consideration okay so this is the criterion for application into book a prize and for this year you find that the irish writer paul lynch has won it okay the novel must be an original work in english no translations are allowed okay and it has to be a work of fiction and essentially self published novels not allowed you need to get published in united kingdom okay let's go ahead and answer this very simple question for me friends for those of you who follow sports i think this should be relatively easy ballon d'or athletics the puskas award football and fih player of the year heptathlon identify the correctly matched okay simple question not very difficult right if you have any particular doubts related to what we discussed here today you reach out to me on my instagram channel that goes by the name of bhuvan study iq and well we can go ahead and try and uh, resolve that for you right let's look at the questions of yesterday my friend so we discussed bardha wildlife sanctuary in gujarat okay it's being developed as a second home for the asiatic lion so let's look at the advantages that the government of gujarat hopes to have by having a second home for the lions okay so a narrower gene pool for example if this is gir somnath right and here you have say n number of lions okay and if you shift some to say bardha wildlife sanctuary right so doesn't your gene pool expand now correct migration of species in different areas always leads to an increase of gene pool intermixing of genes right so this is incorrect reduced risk of disease obviously if you have a particular disease say a which affects this area at least this area is insulated safe so this is correct and safe habitat for old lions why because i told you that well lions are essentially what cats big cats and like all other cats they are territorial and what you find is thus that well as a lion gets older you will have a young lion that will go ahead and approach it to secure the young lion's dominance over that particular territory in which case you might have a fatal fight and the old lion might be susceptible to death okay could be dying in that case so to protect the old lions 
you will most likely have the older lines being sent here right so absolutely correct so your answer here being 2 and 3 which is option c okay right we discussed real estate investment uh, trusts yesterday right sebi has come up with a new framework so if you want to go ahead and well invest in retail or office office space yes go ahead and send your money to a real estate investment trust which will pool money from several other investors like you and then go ahead and invest money in these retail spaces they will not go ahead and invest money with the process or the point or the aim of developing that space no they will say they are essentially like resellers okay they will use it to increase their investment portfolio and then secure profits for you okay so this these are investment vehicles that can be used by real estate players to attract private investment which is your money absolutely correct okay they allow one to invest in income generating real estate assets yes both office and retail both you will have the option to invest and they can invest yes true so all are correct here right last question from the class of yesterday which of the above may be classified as an autoimmune disease an autoimmune disease is one where your own body attacks your own body okay so for example type 1 diabetes your beta cells uh, are attacked by uh, uh, say your insulin is compromised by the beta cells right so type 1 diabetes yes here in hiv aids the a stands for auto acquired and not autoimmune so incorrect okay vitiligo true so one and th three only which is b right so puja amit neeraja shubham studying the kun akhil manoj koder karuna gopesh aditya gatso ayush vidit and nishchay thank you guys thank you so much i am extremely happy to see your participation continuous participation and all i can tell you at this point of time is that keep at it okay some days you might feel like not studying to the extent that you probably would have studied the previous day okay it's important to, to set yourself small targets give yourself that bandwidth to fail once in a while it's okay yes but eventually your momentum has to be continuous right so for example there is no point that if one studies say 15 hours on one day and then studies for just 2 hours the other day okay it's it, that person will always lose out to someone who studies say 10 hours or 8 hours on a daily basis yes be the uh, tortoise don't be the rabbit okay to the rest of you may i suggest look to answer questions i have given you three questions in this class please do leave your answers for me in the comment box and we will discuss the right answers in the class tomorrow right on that note my friends i will take your leave but not before i please request you to consider leaving me a like for if you understood the three topics that is the only thing that an educator wants as i help you prepare in a coherent in a holistic manner for upsc csc 2024 with that, it's a wrap from me, Bhuvan Apurvajha, for Study IQ IS English. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. in the next class of Indian Express Explained. Have a productive day. Bye.